Hello, 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 you amazing hackers. Hope you're all doing well today. So today we have five things, five mistakes that you should avoid if you want to be a successful bug bounty hunter. So let's get right into it, shall we? At number five, we have picking only programs that are paid. So this is a big mistake that I used to make in the beginning and sometimes I still do. I used to go for the programs that paid and I used to go for the programs that paid big even. I used to go for the biggest payers out there like private banks like google like all that kind of stuff but of course if you do that you know that those targets are going to be extra hardened because a lot of hackers are going to want to go after that money just like you and you also know that if you pick a vulnerability disclosure program <coughs> that often the scope is going to be a whole lot bigger so that's why i would always recommend that you also look at just vulnerability disclosure programs and not just at programs that pay you bounty now the next thing at number four we have not reading the target page properly when you guys go to a target uh, and you guys probably know what i'm talking about when you go to your bug bounty platform you have a scope page and it tells you everything that you're allowed to do everything that you're not allowed to do and also frequently asked questions all that kind of stuff what's in scope what's out of scope and i would really 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 recommend that you read that stuff because even on integrity they had to close down a program this one time because uh, some really advanced uh, hackers used to go out of scope and the program really didn't appreciate that so they asked to be terminated on integrity so you know it it happens all of the time it happens everywhere and I, I would really, really appreciate it if you guys, you know, just read the, the scope page properly. And I do it as well, you know. I often just glance over and I miss a lot of the details, but those details really matter, you know. Some scope pages, they asked you to include some specific headers to indicate that you're from a bug bounty platform. And if you miss that kind of stuff, those programs are not going to be happy with you. So this is pretty much something that you should do for yourself. Now over at number three, we have the next thing, which is not digging in deep enough. Now you guys probably all know what I mean by this. You, you, I always say that you have to go deep and not wide. You have to, some people, they see a scope and there's only one domain and scope and it's just www.target.com. And they go like, oh no, that scope is way too narrow for me. But when I see those kind of scopes, I go really, I'm, I'm pretty excited because that means that I can go really deep into one thing and I don't have to spend hours just picking something that I find interesting from a list of subdomains, you know. So that's why I really like just going in really deep, reading all those manuals and a famous hacker that I really like. Um, his name is NT and he works at Integrity. He once said in an interview, if people spend eight hours hacking, I spent those eight hours reading the manual and I really liked that quote because it, it really resonated with me. You have to really understand what you're testing before you're able to understand what is a defect and what's not and also what impact your defect has which brings me right on to number two which is reporting low defect low impact vulnerabilities or overestimating the impact of your vulnerability which is even worse. I, I used to do this in the beginning. I used to find like missing missing HTTP only uh, headers on flags, um, flags on cookies. So missing HTTP only flags on cookies, and I would report it as like medium vulnerability because my burp suite would report it as medium vulnerability. Which, if you know anything about bug bounty hunting, that's not even a proper low vulnerability. Maybe a low vulnerability, but not something that you should report. You know. You can report it, of course, but you have to try to change something like that into higher vulnerabilities. And then right now I just note them down and I keep them in the back of my mind for when I try to hack a little bit deeper into the website and I find something that might need that uh, missing flag or something like that. You know, I just note it down in my OneNote. And then, of course, number one. I should have never waited to start so long. So number one is waiting way too long to start. You know, if you guys feel like you're ready to hack, if you guys feel like you're ready to do bug bounties, 
do it do yourself a favor because what you need most of all is experience you need to get into this world you need to see what it has to offer and you cannot get that if you don't do it i waited until until i was 27 years old before i even started learning about hacking and that's one of the things i regret most so that was my top five things to avoid if you want to be a successful bug bounty hunter do you guys have any tips about things that you should avoid if you want to be a good bounty hunter put them down in the comments below um, I'll also put some links in the description. Feel free to check them out. There will be a Discord in there. So if you guys want to chat, I'm always hanging out in there. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.